Hello, I'm Scott Thompson, and welcome to After 10. In emphasizing the importance of cultural enrichment, President Park Geun-hye is emphasizing that the Korean wave is about much more than just K-pop. Korean art plays a big role. On today's After 10, we are joined by the curator of a special exhibition in the United States that is promoting Korean art and thereby promoting Korea to the rest of the world. This past June, a Korean art exhibition opened in Cleveland, Ohio, USA. The Cleveland Museum of Art is known for its distinguished collection of Asian art. In commemoration of the museum's 100th anniversary, the museum made plans to open its first Korean art exhibition. After a fiercely competitive interview process, a person was selected to put together and manage the exhibition, curator Sun Sung Hae. Sun Sung Hae sees every piece of Korean artwork as a cultural ambassador. Professor Sun Sung Hae, thank you very much for being on the show. Hi, it is my great honor uh, to join your show. Let's begin with the Korean exhibition at the Cleveland Museum of Art. This is very, very meaningful. Yeah. Uh, tell us just how meaningful it is. Yeah, yes, Cleveland Museum inaugurated in 1913. At the time, uh, there is no Korean art collection and there is no curator of Korean art too. And after just 100 years in history and to collect Korean art and to establish the uh, spaces, the finally the museum decided uh, to open the first Korean gallery in 1999 and after uh, almost more than 15 years construction and they opened the Korean gallery. In June. In June. Right. Yeah. This is also very meaningful because the Cleveland Museum of Art is a world-renowned museum. Tell us a little bit mm. about the museum yeah. itself. And Cleveland Museum of Art is one of the best uh, museums which holds the Asian art collection. And uh, one of the three best museums, uh, one is Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the other is Boston, Museum of Fine Art Boston, and Cleveland Museum of Art. And as a Korean, you've done a great deal to promote Korean art mm -hmm. and Korean culture mm -hmm. to the rest of the world. How were you selected to be the curator for this exhibition? Cleveland Museum of Art, and it, it was very competitive uh, competition, and, but and the museum evaluated my experience and my education and in Korea and Japan and United States. Especially, I was born in Korea and educated in Korea from elementary school to college and master's degree. And I got my PhD in Japan at the University of Tokyo. And I worked some experience in United States. This kind of diversity of my experience was and just appearing to them. And I have one very interesting story. And there was a gallery talk and to all the steps of the museums. And we naturally, I know what is the essence of Korean culture. So I try to explain it very in easy way. And it is very, uh, they somehow just they uh, were so touched uh, from my explanation. So the gallery talk was the most important and want to get the job there. It, we don't have enough time for you to give the entire pitch, of course, <laughs> yeah. but, but what was uh, that explanation? What did you tell them about the essence of Korea? Essence of Korea. And there is one screen, the Japanese screen, uh, paint tiger and dragon. But the painter was inspired uh, by Korean paintings. Uh, but the dragon and tiger is not limited Korea and Japan. Also, it was uh, shared uh, in China too. So I explained this kind of cultural icons uh, has been shared in East Asia for, uh, for more than 1,000 years in China and Korea and Japan. So I explained uh, the kind of uh, cultural power in East Asia was shared in Korea and transformed in Korea. 
Uh, so the kind of explanation, the people love the kind of open mind uh, to all Asian country. When you got the position, mm -hmm. you were working as a curator for the National Museum of Korea, a dream job I would oh, have yeah. to imagine for <laughs> yeah. anybody in your field. Was it then a tough decision to make mm -hmm. to, to move mm -hmm. to Cleveland for, for this particular exhibition? Mm -hmm. It is National Museum of Korea is very privileged position, absolutely. It is very a uh, wonderful collection. Uh, why I try to move to the Cleveland Museum of Art? Because of the project because it is the truly meaningful in my life. It, it is the only one opportunity to open the first Korean gallery at the Cleveland Museum of Art. The kind of motivation uh, made me uh, decide to go to the United States. So maybe a difficult decision, but one that you were uh, encouraged to take uh -huh. on, I yeah. would imagine. Mm. Now you were selected to be the curator in, in 2010 uh, it finally opened, this exhibition did, mm -hmm. in June. Tell us about the exhibition and what kinds mm -hmm. of artwork are displayed there. Oh, it is in the Korean gallery shows in Korean art and art from the Neolithic period uh, to uh, Joseon period in contemporary art. And the masterpieces is the Buddhist art uh, of Three Kingdom period and the Goryeo Celadons and porcelains and then and the paintings of Joseon period. And then it concludes the contemporary Korean porcelain. So we're talking about a wide span wide, of time, a yeah. lot of different types of art pieces. How many roughly are on display? Uh, uh, roughly about uh, 100 pieces. Uh, but and the paintings and the textiles should be rotated every six months. And when you entered this project, Mm. What was the concept for what you wanted it to be? Oh, my concept of these two galleries is neighborhood, uh, good friendship. So I try to make uh, the mutual space of Korea and Japan in the middle to show Buddhist art. Also, um, both sides has independent galleries. So I try to uh, just express my ideas to American audience and Korea and Japan share in the culture and, and historical background, and but and transformed and then it, and developed their own and beauties. And of the 100 or so pieces that are on display there at the mm -hmm. exhibition, are there any national cultural treasures as well? Oh yes, absolutely. And Cleveland Museum's policy to collect in the art uh, artworks is to only collect the masterpieces. Among the Korean art collection, I can say one of the masterpieces is the screen of Mount Tilbo. Mount Tilbo is now located in Hamgyong province. It is the north in Korea. I never see this kind of paintings. It is 10 panel paintings. It's, it is panoramic view and it is very detailed depiction of all the, dip, uh, all the peaks and mountains and in, on the screens. And this exhibition opened in June. How is it being received so far by the people who are going to see it? Oh, everybody loves and the just finally they uh, really loves the Korean gallery opening. And American audience are very excited to see the masterpieces of Korean art because an old collection were um, conserved at the storage. The public um, didn't have the opportunity to appreciate it. So they love to uh, appreciate the kind of beauty of Korea. And also the Korean Americans, really they just uh, flow their tears. After they moved to United States and 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and uh, they, uh, they say they didn't have the chance uh, to show Korean and art and culture to their own friends. But finally, they, uh, the Korean American themselves appreciate Korean art there and also they are very happy to introduce their own culture to their friends. Exhibitions, of course, require items to mm -hmm. put on display. How did you search for? How did you find oh. these items that are on display at the exhibition? I imagine it would have been mm -hmm. a very painstaking process. Oh, yeah. It is one of the very uh, crucial uh, responsibility as a curator is to find masterpiece 
and to acquire it for the museums. And I always search the, uh, the masterpieces available at the market, and then I research it and the artistic value first, and then uh, try to research the historical background and, and the rarity, how rare it is. So two years ago, in 2010, I acquired one wonderful uh, screen of 19th century for the museums. And I found out in New York an art dealer and then just researched it. So I uh, understood it is very important piece uh, to Korean art history. So I just recommend uh, the museum to acquire it. And uh, finally, I just got the approval, and then I saved the pieces, and then just to keep in the museums. It's, this is a, it takes a lot of work, of mm -hmm. course. There must have been challenges along the way from uh -huh. the beginning until yeah. June when this opened. Can you share some of those with us? When I arrived there in the gallery map plan, the Korea gallery uh, didn't have the entrance, independent entrance. And the visitors should approach Korean gallery through Japanese gallery. I see. They didn't have its own entrance. You had to walk yeah. through the Japanese gallery yeah, to right. get to it. Yeah, because as you know, Korea people, the gate is very important, sure. uh, the entrance. So I really uh, thought very carefully. I uh, made up a very brilliant idea and I proposed to the director's meeting. And I proposed one a mutual space, Korea and Japan, uh, focused on Buddhism. And because uh, these two countries uh, shared and exchanged many cultures uh, through the Buddhism. And directors love that kind of idea because art is different from the politics. So and directors approved the sp mutual space of Korea and Japan. And as a result, Korea and, and Japan Gallery has uh, shared the interest too. And I know before this exhibition opened, you were working on a separate exhibition uh -huh. in your spare time. Tell us a little bit yeah. about that as well. <laughs> as soon as I arrive and as a appointed as the curator of Korean and Japanese art in 2010, I realized, wow, Cleveland Museum of Art has a wonderful, wonderful Korean and Japanese art collection. And they also have a wonderful space of special exhibition gallery. It is a temporary uh, art and uh, gallery. But it is very nice circumstance. So I quickly and uh, just make uh, one exhibition, special exhibition plan and knock the door of the chief creator. So just uh, please uh, listen to my idea. I have uh, one idea. And then uh, the title is uh, Lure of Painted Poetry and Korean and Japanese Art. I try to explain what is the intellectual and uh, art history in Korea and Japan. And the chief, uh, chief creator was so shocked. It is too very fast. Only just I arrived there. I researched the collection only a few months and then make one idea of the exhibition. So, and the chief creator loves that kind of enthusiasm and try to do uh, something. After we had a meeting uh, with the directors and trustees, they finally approved uh, my idea. I could uh, create it the first two countries, special exhibition, Lure of Painted Poetry and Korean and Japanese art. It opened in 2011. Just, uh, and so it is one of the, uh, uh, one of the message and the Cleveland Museum of Art is going to open the first Korean gallery and soon after two years. So many people were so amazed at the kind of speed of course. And the second is the quality of the ex exhibition. And also, I love, I love to work together with the colleagues. So the publication department helps me uh, to publish the catalog, the design and uh, design department helped me to select the best colors uh, for the exhibitions. So for the ex uh, examples, the designers choose the Celadon color uh, for the world of the exhibition. They kind of all the co-works with the colleagues and uh, with owing to their uh, kind of co-working, I just quickly do uh, the special exhibitions there.
And you are currently a professor at Sungkyunkwan University. Yeah, Does this right. mean that your work in Cleveland is now finished? Yeah, now it is uh, finally the project of opening and the first Korean gallery uh, is completed. And my the former uh, special exhibition is uh, really nicely completed. So now I am back to school. And then I uh, have one uh, publication project to write. And to my experience as a curator uh, at the National Museum of Korea and at the Cleveland Museum of Art, I try to uh, just the uh, next generations who want to be the curator and to know. And I would like to share my experience with the next generation. But I know your relationship with the Cleveland Museum uh -huh. of Art is not finished. Do you plan on going back to see the exhibition and, and catch up and see how it's doing? Oh, yeah. And then I also just advise or consulted one special exhibition of Japanese modern art. It is going to open next uh, February, so I will be attending the opening. This exhibition at the museum is intended for audiences who are not Korean. We talked about the challenges mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, is there a special formula, a special way to help people who are not Korean mm -hmm. appreciate Korean art? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, it is quite different and to introduce and to show Korean art in Korea and outside Korea. In Korea, we try to show lots of interpretation of how the Korean art function in the history. But outside Korea, I didn't try to teach them. Just I try to share uh, the beauty of Korea and what kind of beauty I feel uh, in the art, in the celadon, uh, in the paintings. And for sharing this kind of beauty, I have to understand uh, my friends' uh, culture first. If I un uh, understand Chinese friends' and art, or Japanese art, uh, Japanese friends and their culture, and I try to uh, kind of uh, try to explain how different, how similar uh, Korean uh, beauty is. If I try to share the beauty, the people uh, somehow just feel more a kind of Korean beauty more directly, more just they can o they open mm, the eyes and heart. You, you talk about this idea of the first step maybe being introducing mm -hmm. the audience to the beauty. Uh -huh. uh, the next step would maybe be teaching and, and helping them yeah. learn certain things as well. Yeah, the next step is of course education, but education is not only just in many ways. Uh, many educating programs uh, for the childrens and for the adults. And sometimes uh, through the lectures, I have one. I have one very interesting story. And there is one class of elementary school. Uh, it is a kind of in Korea, and teenagers about 13 years and girls uh, may develop their own program to teach eight years old and nine years old. I attended to uh, develop that kind of program as a curator. And the student tried to understand first Korean language. So what is the words of dragon in Korea and yong? What is the words uh, of Korean words and goat is flower? And then I try to just uh, and explain one by one. And then what is the words first? What is the uh, painting second? What is the kind of uniqueness of Korean art? So there are many kinds of educations and ways, educating ways. And this is the idea of promoting Korean art, promoting mm -hmm. Korean culture through uh -huh. the rest of the world uh -huh. in uh, helping them appreciate the beauty uh -huh. of Korea. What positive effects uh, do come from promoting Korean art in places like America and in other countries as well? It is my, uh, my belief and art and culture is the very important step stone and among countries, sometimes the people uh, struggled uh, with political issues, but art and culture uh, connect the, the people. Uh, so, so it is very uh, important and uh, one foundation uh, for the uh, human, uh, just the peace of the society, peace of and uh, all over the world. Mm. There are some people out there yeah. who would say that these national treasures mm -hmm. should be in Korea, that mm -hmm. they should be brought back to Korea, uh -huh. uh, that's where they belong. Uh -huh. What is your position 
uh, on that matter. Okay, uh, I can say uh, my answer is yes and no. And some Korean art and had better stay outside Korea and function as a cultural diplomat. But some national treasures uh, should be uh, brought back to Korea. So I have to say yes and no. Uh, how, do you, how do you sort of make that distinction uh -huh. then? And, and who makes that distinction, makes that decision between what should be out there uh -huh. as sort of an ambassador okay. of Korea and uh -huh. those that should stay in Korea? Is there a way to, to figure out which is which? Mm. As a curator, it is very difficult to loan Korean national treasures uh, from national uh, from Korea to the United States for the security issues, insurance issues. National treasures can stay outside Korea and just preserved at the important museums. And they can introduce and they can display it at the museums. But some um, pieces, uh, if uh, some Korean national treasures uh, was brought illegally in before 1945, after a kind of discussions um, between the countries, I hope some national treasures uh, can uh, be back to Korea. Uh, what would you like to say, what sort of advice would you like to give to the mm -hmm. next generation of curators who would like to do mm -hmm. what you've done, who would like to start an exhibition in another country? Yeah, and uh, these days, uh, many uh, young uh, people uh, want, want uh, to be a curator uh, like me. And first, I would like to say to them, and just to try to understand other and uh, countries' culture first, not just to limit it to Korean art. If they understand the more they understand and the art and culture of many countries, of many people, the more and the better, and they can understand what is the Korean culture and beauty. After this kind of uh, understanding, they can be a wonderful creator. And I just, I believe uh, my next young generations uh, can uh, become much better creator than I. Professor Sun, thank you so very much for being on the show and sharing mm -hmm. your insights today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much today. And we certainly encourage anybody who might be in the Cleveland area in the months to come to definitely check out okay. this exhibition. Thank you so much again. We appreciate it. Thank you.